China's electric vehicle juggernaut is conquering the world, and many people don't realize what's happening. The global car market is being disrupted this year more than any other year by Chinese hybrids and EVs. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. YouTube's new algorithm means that you're often not getting all of our videos in your feed. There's 7,500. I'm pretty sure you're probably not seeing a lot of them. In the description, there is a link to our newsletter. Click on that and you can get an update every day of all the latest news in the electric car industry. China's electric vehicle revolution has sent shockwaves across the entire world. Some companies are really struggling. European car manufacturers, their profits have collapsed. Beijing's rapid auto sector growth has been attributed to subsidies, tax incentives, and massive funding in research and development costs. Chinese car companies are spending crazy, and I mean very impressive amounts of money on R&D, and that's having direct, direct results with the technology in their cars, the fastest charging EVs, the longest range EVs, the best tech. Rella Suskin, equity analyst at Morningstar, said the growing competitiveness of Chinese EVs in many parts of the world is only just beginning, and it's about to get a lot worse for legacy automakers. The speed and scale of China's electric vehicle revolution has caught the world by surprise. Obviously not you, if you've been watching this channel, four and a half years, nearly five years ago, I was saying this would happen, and many of you were saying the same thing. Analysts say this trend shows no sign of slowing down. If anything, it's only about to speed up. Tesla CEO Elon Musk was among those who underestimated the potential of Chinese EV manufacturers. Back in 2011, Musk slammed BYD. Why do you laugh? BYD <laughs> is trying to compete. Why do you laugh? Have you seen their car? I have seen their cars, yes. In fact, at the Berkshire Hathaway meeting, I saw their cars. Yeah. Well, they are on a different... They are on a different tell me why you're laughing. Um, you don't see them at all as a competitor? No. Because to be honest, BYD was rubbish back then. If you asked BYD CEO, were your cars any good in 2011? I think he'd probably admit that they were not. But things have changed drastically since then. In 2011, Musk laughed at BYD's products during a Bloomberg interview. Have you seen their car, Musk said? I don't think it's particularly attractive. The technology is not very strong, and BYD as a company has pretty severe problems in their home turf in China. I think their focus is, and rightly should be, on making sure they don't die in China. Now, Musk wasn't wrong at the time. But, of course, things drastically changed. BYD went from selling 400,000 cars a year to more than 4 million. And they've had the last word. The company, is, the company has been at the forefront of China's aggressive EV push alongside rivals like Zika, Xpeng, NIO, Elite Motor, and many others. Rapidly expanding their domestic market and overtaking Tesla, or BYD has, as the largest EV manufacturer, or I should say the largest EV slash plug-in hybrid manufacturer by revenue in 2024. Chinese startups such as NIO, Xpeng, and Liuoro alongside more established automakers, including Geely and Seik Motor, are also leading manufacturers in this space. Battery giant CATL, the world's largest battery company, has meanwhile been a key player in powering these vehicles. And it, seeing as the cost of batteries in China is far lower than what they are in the rest of the world, and there is an oversupply of batteries. It means these, these companies are getting batteries at remarkably low prices. Henna Len, Vice President of Competitive Intelligence, Market Analysis, Forecasting, and S&P Global Mobility, said China's EV industry has become a significant force in reshaping the entire global car market. Just a couple of years ago, the domestic car manufacturers in China were not seen as true competitors to the established global car industry. Well, I did. I thought they were, but I mean, yeah, everyone else didn't, I guess. But that changed quickly within just a couple of years, Lean told CNBC. B1 
Bermuda alone was growing at about 1 million units per year for the first three years straight, wiping out the smile in the faces of many product managers from legacy car makers. And the competition is not only staying in China, it's, uh, it's going global. In 2023, China surpassed Japan as the world's largest vehicle exporter. Its domestic car sales then ballooned to a record 31.4 million units. Now, that is more sales than the, than the United States and Europe put together. And brand new EVs accounted for roughly 41% of total vehicle, vehicles produced. This year, that figure is over 50%. The Asian giant's auto sector growth has been attributed to subsidies, tax incentives, and between 20, 2009 and 2023, an estimated $230 billion in EV development costs. I think the figure is actually much higher than that. Analysts also cited lower labor costs, the weaker yen, innovative technological developments, and a robust battery supply chain among Beijing's key advantages. Now, the truth is, because China makes so many more electric cars than, well, the rest of the world combined, it can make them at a much lower price. Its factories are more efficient, and therefore, it has a huge cost advantage. China's ascent has since led to regulatory scrutiny in Western markets amid allegations of anti-competitive practices. But the thing is, that's the way that these companies, well, that's what they do in China as well. They compete in a blood, in a, what is being called a bloodbath by the CEO of Xpeng. Now, both the United States and the European Union have slapped duties on Chinese-made EVs to protect traditionally dominant American and European brands. But in Europe, it's not working. Car brands are finding a way to get around it. For example, BYD now ships its EVs from Thailand to Europe, meaning it doesn't have to pay those tariffs. Michael Dunn, CEO of Dunn Insights and a China auto market researcher, said he expects China to cement its dominance in auto manufacturing, just as it has done for solar panels, shipbuilding, drones, and steel in recent years. By 2030, Dunn told CNBC he expects China will manu manufacture 36 million vehicles per year, or around 40% of all cars made worldwide. 40%. That figure could be even higher. He also anticipates that Beijing will export an estimated 9 million vehicles a year from just 1 million in 2020, a 900% increase on car exports. Imagine where it's going to be in 2040. Countries with smaller manufacturing industries like Thailand, Africa, Spain, and even I think Japan are already feeling the pressure from China's imports, Dunn told CNBC. In the UK, for one, Chinese EV sales have skyrocketed. Chinese-owned car brands accounted for roughly 10% of all new car sales in June, up massively from previous years. Chinese EV brands have also made huge inroads in EV-friendly Norway, from the first delivery of an MG EV to the Nordic country in January 2020. Chinese EV brands have gone on to capture a combined market share of 10%. Now, going from 0% market share to 10% market share within five years kind of gives you an idea of where things, where things are really headed in Norway. Rula Suskin, equity analyst at Morningstar, said the growing competitiveness of Chinese vehicles in many parts of the world is only just beginning. It's so saturated in China that they have to look elsewhere. And we're at the point now where exports to the rest of the world are really just starting. We haven't even begun to see the start of it, Suskin told CNBC by video call. In that vein, China's EV industry was recently found to have spent more on factories abroad than at home for the first time on record during 2024. I mean, hearing that is quite staggering, staggering, isn't it? Hearing the fact that China spent more on EV development factories, just EV spending in general, outside of China in 2024 than they did inside of China, it's kind of hard to believe, but apparently it's true. The story for Chinese EV players is perhaps not so good in their domestic market, though. 
Analysts told CNBC they expect an industry shakeout before too long, with many startups struggling to turn a profit in an increasingly crowded field. And there's more than 90 EV manufacturers in China. And most experts, even some CEOs of Chinese car companies, believe that that number will come down to about seven over the next decade. What's Europe going to do about it and what are they doing? Well, Sigrid de Vries, Director General of the European Automobile Manufacturers Association, called the ACEA, described China as a fierce competitor in the global market. And I think that's probably an understatement. I think we as the European auto industry have a legacy of being great competitors as well. So I certainly wouldn't want to give up on European players or Japanese, Korean or American for that matter. ACEA represents 16 major Europe-based automobile manufacturers, including Volkswagen, Audi, BMW, Stellantis, Renault, and even Volvo, which is actually owned by Chinese conglomerate Geely. It is frequently called on the EU to take action to ensure the bloc's competitiveness on the road to full electrification. And now, European car makers are trying desperately to compete with Chinese China's EV behemoth. ACEA's De Vries said a leveling of the policy playing field would make a meaningful difference. This is what they said. We have to realize that some of that leveling of the ground, speaking for the EU, could be realized on their own terms. It's a regulatory framework driving cost, stifling innovation, rather than unleashing entrepreneurial spirit. And within the last few weeks, many experts have claimed the biggest problem for the German automotive industry is not even the car makers themselves. It's actually regulations and bureaucracy. ACEA's De Vries added that while Europe won't be able to substantially influence China or the United States, the bloc's regulatory framework could be adjusted to try and create the best possible environment for doing business in Europe. Recently, we saw the European car manufacturers basically beg the European Union to cancel the ban on internal combustion engine sales in 20, starting in 2035. They know that if that continues, if that is put in place, then a massive percentage of the cars sold in Europe by 2035 will be Chinese. It's so much cheaper to make electric cars in China. Thanks for watching.